Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude and Friends. Today's episode is, and one more thing. Yeah, you know, uh, we were talking in the last episode about Snowball, and I had set up a whole range of things I was going to do, and I'm still going to do some of those items. But it, it illustrates an important point. You want to plan a bunch of different things, and and uh, basically, I'll tell you what happened with with Snowball and how it snapped him almost completely out of his problem. Okay. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis. And I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shake. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. The Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. He's in here with us today. But think of it this way. Do you really want to go to war with a single pistol and one bullet? Whenever you're dealing with a situation with a bird, okay, whenever you're dealing with situations, you need to bring a whole arsenal with you, okay? Think of it as, you're not really going to that one, but think of it like first aid. You're not going to go to, onto a battlefield with a single bandage, right? So whenever you walk into a situation, you want to have a tool bag. And that's one of the reasons, what are you doing back there, Salamander? And that's one of the reasons that I always try to tell people you need to learn applied behavior analysis. You learn you you need to learn reward training. You want to come over? Well, come on, come on, big boy. You want to learn reward training. Um, you want to know uh, a little bit about physiology and and biology so that you can deal with issues like health issues. Okay. If you don't realize, for example, like what ha happened with Chloe, where she started having a whole bunch of extra urine in her poop, well, that's a situation that isn't diarrhea. That's, that's the renal shunt. That's bypassing the liver to go directly to the kidneys. And that's an immediate trip to the vet. And if you don't know, you go to the vet anyway, right? You're not sure. If you're dead sure, that's fine. You know, you know what it is, that's, that's fine. But, um, but anyway, whenever you're approaching a situation other than medical, all right, you're approaching a behavioral situation, we're talking about behavior here, you want to have a whole tool set. Yeah, that's true, too, of medical. You should see the medical kit we have here. I mean, pretty much you could do almost anything with our medical kit. It's, it's better than an OSHA kit, okay? There's more stuff in there, and it's funny because... I hardly ever need it unless I bump into something, you know, I bump into a cage. There's a lot of sharp edges. And I'm moving through these places pretty, hey, Lorelei, 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 hey, you, Lorelei, 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 get out there, Lorelei, get out there, 
Lorelai! Hey! Hey, yeah! I get back. Lorelai has learned that when these cameras are rolling and I'm talking to this one in front of me, that she can get away with things. And she knows better than getting up on the cabinet. That cabinet serves two purposes. I like everything to serve more than one purpose, at least. That cabinet also makes it harder for them to get to the computers, okay? The ones we use for all this fancy video work. And uh, I hope I remember I want to take a a panorama of the setup in here so you can see how complicated all this is and maybe it'll help you think about donating <laughs> right um if you want to see all the show not just part of the show then the way to do that is is to to join and you can do that by going to our website going to donate and then setting up a, a monthly donation and that monthly donation can be two dollars a month $3 a month, $5 a month, 10 whatever you want to do, okay? And uh, we still have a Patreon account, but I prefer the new members to go out there. And the reason I want you to go to our website first and hit the donate button and set it up there is because it's easier for me to track you guys, okay? We have people on PayPal. We have people making other donations through other different platforms. We have a single platform now, and it's just easier to keep track of you, so I can make sure I can give you perks, okay? I can give you, you know, I'm, pl I'm planning at the end of the year for our supporters who are giving $5 or more um, to give, like, a coffee cup or something. Um, this is what I'm hoping to do. I'm not guaranteeing anything yet. I want to talk to them and see what they want, but... So, anyway. So, when you approach, when you approach a situation, like with, with Snowball... You heard all the different ideas I had. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, try, I'm going to do training. I'm going to try and, you know, train some uh, environmental changes. Watch what you get into. Ah, Pippa. No, Pippa, stay away from the camera. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Don't mess with the other birds either. You're a pretty girl. She likes to go over by the computers only when we're doing this, these videos. Otherwise, she just ignores that area. She doesn't go there. Um, the training, I'm still going to do the training. Okay? I, I, I want to do it with Snowball because that's what I, you know, I, I've done plans for it already. So it's going to be kind of fun to teach him to, to, to use a stationary target, to, to teach him to do a hand target. Uh, I know some people use an object for targeting. targeting. That's fine when you're going to put them up against something. But I want them to target in my hand because it's a lot easier to have them move around just by moving my hand around, okay? So anyway, all these all these plans I had and and basically what I did was rearrange the bird room. I took his cage from the one end of the bird room and moved it to the other. You want to go over here now, sweetie? You done? You don't want any more? Yeah, he comes over and he leaves and he comes over and he leaves. Don't you? Don't you? Yes, Peppa. Pip, 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 pip. Oh, come here, Peppa. Want to come over here? Come see me? Come on, Pip. Come here, Pip. So, I moved his cage so that he no longer was next to Chloe's old cage, where Cecil is now. And he immediately changed his attitude. He's much more into things. You're not going to mess with her. No, you're not. This is her attack mode. I want to get Pippa. Leave Pippa alone. Leave Pippa alone. Coco, what are you doing way up there? I don't even know. I think I've got a camera that can catch you up there, but I'm not sure. I think I have that set to do it. Um, it's hard. I actually think I need one more camera in here. Oh, my word. we got four now. So just moving him. Hello. Good. Okay, that's good snowball. Just moving him across the room, and now he's feeling much better. Although maybe too much better. So leave her alone. This is, not, this is not a bordello. So leave Lorelei alone. Don't you start vibrating. <sighs> we were we had about a month when she stopped exhibiting mating behavior. Now she started up again. No. 
Snowball? No, Snowball. Leave her alone. No. 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 Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah, see? Yeah, he's got that happy look back in his face now. I think he still needs a little work, don't you? But you're not crying anymore. Yeah. He's starting to look for another mate. Yeah. So when you walk into a situation, and let's say that you have a bird you're trying to teach to step up. Okay, so you've planned it out. You're going to approach the cage. You're taking them out of the cage. You're trying to get them to step up from the cage. Okay, you plan that you're going to put your hand in the cage or get your hand close, and you're going to have a treat, and you're going to go like this. Okay, you're going to give them a little bit of a treat. We're talking like maybe a sunflower seed or something. You're going to give them a, a treat like this, and then eventually you're going to move that back. You're going to keep doing this. You don't want to overfeed them. So. Be careful, right? You move your hand back little by little until they have to step, reach over, and then they have to step on your hand. That's all great. So you go up there and immediately you get lunging. And you haven't tried this before with that bird yet, so you're getting lunging. And you're going, uh, okay, what do I do? Well, if you thought it out, you'd say, well, if I can't get them to step up on the hand, I can put a dowel in there. All right? And one more thing. I could, I could put a dowel in there. So I can hold the dowel, bring the dowel over, get them to step up on the dowel, right? Now what happens if they won't step up on the dowel? They're, they run away from that. Well, at that point, you could try just getting close and seeing how if you can move up slowly and get them to take the sunflower seed, right? What if that doesn't work? Okay, now you can go to protected contact mode. And in protected contact, the cage door is closed, and you offer them the treat through the cage, the cage bars, right? Well, what if that doesn't work, right? Well, you could take the treat, and if they're comfortable with a spoon, then you could put the treat on a spoon and put that through the cage door, all right? What if that doesn't work? Well, you could sit by the cage and talk sweetly to them, all right? So you can sit there and talk to them for a minute. The next day you can talk to them for a minute and 10 seconds and then slowly start to the point where you're, you're offering them that treat and they're taking it through the bars. And you just work your way through that routine. Now you may go put your hand up there like this with the, the seed. They may take it from you. And the next thing you know, when you go pulling your hand back, they step right up on your hand. So here you have all these plans and they weren't needed. They are needed. They're needed because you need to be in a frame of reference where you're ready to make changes like that. You don't want to make changes like that if you're going off the cuff. You want to have as many bobs in the back room. I can't have him here, in here with Pippa. And lately he's still territorial. I'm still working on that. And again, doing multiple things with him. but. I get through a whole road, a whole roadmap of things, and he's still territorial. So it's just a matter of work, work, work. This chair, this little, oh, it's actually just an outside chair um, I, that, that I have a, a thrown a blanket over. But it's good because I can lean back in this chair, or I can put it at a different angle so birds can all sit on me. It has a lot of advantages. And it went into my thinking. I could have got one of those big stuffed chairs. This is just an outside lounge chair, a zero gravity lounge chair is what it is. So again, I was thinking, how could I get something that would be hard for them to destroy? They could rip up the webbing on it, but I have it covered. Um, it's steel, so there's nothing there for them to really damage. But how could I use it multiply? What are the different things I could do with it? Um, I even had one night when I was really just feeling horrible. Um, I, I have a hernia, so sometimes a little bloating can make it really tough to survive that day. No, Lorelei! No! No, you two! No! Separate! Good. Good. Good birds. Good birds. So, yes, you're, you're, you're looking for a mate. That's a good thing. You're getting happy again, but you can't have that. Lorelei, no vibrating. Lorelei, 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 get out. Come here. Come here, baby. This vibrating thing is not working for you. No, it's not. 
And again, in this situation, there's a lot of things I can do. Uh, I know what my options are. I can break them up. I can pick one of the two birds up. I can move a bird from place to place like this. Okay. Um, come here. Come on, Snowball. No, no, don't look at her. You're not going to mess with her. Leave her alone. He's looking at Pippa. You leave Pippa alone. Pippa hasn't done anything. She's being a good girl. So, if you have a lot of options, it's not going to be a problem. Now, I've had situations like, I forgot one time, with this big guy, Salamander. One thing you cannot do is come up with a headset on. If you got one of those big headsets on, and I have one that will knock out most of the sound if they're just in a particularly screaming mode at night. I can put that thing on, and it'll knock most of it out. I can listen to a podcast or something while I'm working. I walked up to his cage, I opened the door, and that would, and he bit me, of course, he, he, just because the headset was on. So I got my hand out of the cage, I closed the door, I went in, washed my, my hand off, got the, you know, got the bleeding stopped, um, put a bandage on it, you know, put some, you put on antibiotic ointment, but I mean, it's not going to be from them, it's the nasty stuff on our skin that's going to get get you because these guys don't have saliva and saliva is the number one cause of that disease that you're going to pick up which is why if a bird gets bit by a cat or a dog you got to get them straight to the vet and you got to go on uh, Batril or something like that so so anyway I knew what I was going to do when I got bit I realized oh my okay uh oh got myself cleaned up got the band-aid on took the headset off of course went back in picked him up and talked to him told him what a good bird he was he didn't do anything wrong I I knew that was going to happen. Now, if I get... I know, sweetie, I know. I know. I know. Now I sound like... Now I sound like... Uh, someone from... From... Uh, Faulty Towers. Right? I know. But... Um, it happens once in a while. Something will go wrong. I'm not not catching what's happening. I'm not paying attention to the exact signals a bird's getting, and I will get nipped or bit. Um, nipped is where they bite you and you don't bleed. <laughs> bit is where you're bleeding. Okay, that's the way I define it anyway. So when that happens, I know what the situation. Hey, hey, hey! Stay away from the camera. No, 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 no. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Snowball. Ah, 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 ah. no! You're not going over there. Nope, nope, nope. He was thinking about going over to where Lorelei is, of course. Typical male, aren't ya? Well, not that typical. So, you get bit, you're not expecting it, but you know how you're going to deal with the bite. You know that you have to let the bird know that they're okay, that it was your fault, and you deal with it. I've had, in the past, I've had bites, snowball, that where they hit something arterial and you're just pumping blood out. So you have to, you have to get the blood stopped. You know, you get the bleeding stopped. No snowball. No, 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 no snowball. You have to get the bleeding stopped and then you go back to the bird. Okay. Uh, deal with whatever the situation is. Now, if you don't know why, Hey, snowball. So you know, hey, Snowball, stop it. Now, so um, you know how you're going to handle a situation. You know the bird. You've trained the bird to do certain behaviors under certain circumstances. So when you go back, you can try some of those things. If you have a bird that does step up, likes to do step up, and you go, step up, step up, step up, step up, can do multiples, get it to do a behavior and repeat it over and over again, kind of like Bob screaming. Just have it repeated over and over again. He's going to get free time with me. So don't feel too bad for him. He's going to get an hour with me after we do our video. So um, one of the bad things about the days where it's raining and we can't go to the aviary is that I end up having to spend four hours in here just to get everybody what they need. And, uh, you know, I have to move them around, put some birds. I, sometimes they can get along for a little while together. Uh, that's why there's this little cage down here. If I have cause, she's not in here. 
right now either because she's been kind of aggressive to Bob and she's gotten a little over bonded with me. Um, who knows why? I haven't done anything special. But so I can put her down in that little cage for a while on timeout. Any bird that gets two out of it, I can put them in the timeout cage. Laurel, I could go in there. Snowball can go in there if they just keep trying to mate. Um, I was expecting that really to happen more with Cecil, because Cecil's in here, but he's being a good Cecil, aren't you? Cecil Jekyll the half asleep. Which is funny, because most of the birds in here are on medicine, and they're all fairly active or aware, and the one who isn't is up there, and he's looking like he is. Right, Cecil? Right, Pippa? Yeah, I know. Pippa's all fired up. So, if you plan for situations, you don't go to war with a gun with one bullet. You don't go as a, as a medic out into the battlefield carrying one bandage. You make sure you have a whole toolkit. You should have Ultimately, the best way is to go out there with at least reward training, the basics of reward training. The reason I say basics because reward training only covers a small segment of what we do. All right? There are very rarely, but there are situations where we will actually do positive punishment. Positive means you're adding something, and punishment means that you're reducing or extinguishing a behavior. Okay? So in positive punishment, you're adding something. Well, good example. I I don't. This is not the way to train a dog. But when people hit a dog with a newspaper to stop them from peeing on the carpet, that's something <laughs> positive. You're adding something. Right? And punishment because you're trying to reduce or extinguish the behavior. You don't want them peeing on the carpet. There's other ways that you can do that. I mean, there's. But but anyway, the toolkit includes that. It includes a um, a number of different. Um, Replacement behaviors that they don't always teach and just plain reward training. Um, so the, if you've got that toolkit, it's going to help. But always think about what you're going to do when you're walking into a known situation. And then if you can think about unknown situations, those situations where you're sitting on the couch, you're not really doing anything, you're playing with your phone or you're wa watching TV, uh, something like that, watching a movie, and the bird walks over and bites you. How are you going to react? There Now, if you don't know why, you have, you're going to figure out different scenarios. You don't know why it did it, why your bird bit you. Well, how do you deal with an unknown bite? Right? You know, you if it's if it's where you're bleeding and you've got to get to a to get yourself bandaged, how are you going to deal with it? Do you have a towel by here in case for some reason something has really set them off? It might have been on the TV. These guys, uh, when I'm watching. Um, the parrots of Telegraph Hill, they like that movie, but there's one section in there where there's a hawk in the sky, and that hawk, boy, they all go off. Now, if somebody bit you after they heard that hawk, they would be warning you that there's danger, okay? Because in the wild, when they bite each other, they're biting feathers. My feathers, unfortunately, aren't there to protect me from a, from a bite. So that might be the reason. It may be because, you know, Joe walked in the room, okay? It might be because Joe walked through and said something and set him off. Maybe because he was wearing a certain color red shirt that one bird doesn't like that red. The one that, and so third she's red shirt and white shoe. Okay. You don't know. And if they if 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 when you try to to if if you're trying to slowly pick them up to put them on a perch and they're still lunging at you. And you have a towel by the side of the chair so that you can show them the towel. Now, if they know that, that what the towel is used for, that might just calm them down. So first step, try to slowly move in to take to, to pick up your bird. They won't let you do that. Something's got them going. So then you show them the towel. That doesn't work. Then you can you know, drape the towel over them and take them somewhere. Put them on a perch. Don't put them straight in, your cage, in their cage. Um, and don't put them somewhere they like to go, okay? They might want to go back to their cage. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to, like, a bird nips you, so you take them back to their cage. Well, if they were scared and they really wanted to go back to their cage, you just reinforce the behavior. So the next time, you're more likely to get bit. So 
if you have a perch that's kind of across from where you are, kind of out of the way, maybe it's not in view of the TV or whatever they like to see, and you put them over there for a couple of minutes, let them calm down, bring them back. Try not to, try not to possibly reward them for doing something like a nip or a bite. And one way to reward them is to put them back in the cage if they're afraid, because that's their security zone. Try to get them back on you, even if you've got to leave. Like, you, you had to leave in 15 minutes, so you look at your watch and you go, i got to get out of here in 15 minutes. Put them over on that perch for two minutes. See if you can get them back in your lap. Reward them with something for being good. Put them in their cage. Boom. So what you're doing is you're rewarding them for having sex in your lap and being good, not, not for biting you, okay? And uh, if I were to walk up to you, okay, and you bit me, okay, so you're a human, you, you, I walk up to you and you just root, go over and bite me, right? And if I hand you a candy bar, the next time you're more likely to bite me. Just think about that, okay? Boy, you know, when I bit Don, he gave me a candy bar. Maybe I'll try biting him again. I mean, humans do the same thing, but not usually with biting. But if you go to somebody, you go over to somebody's house, and they, you know, they're like, "Oh, come on, have dinner," and da 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 da. And oh no, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to muzzle in on your free time. Oh, come on in. And if you're always accepting, then there's more likely you're going to hear knock, knock, knock. Oh, oh, Tyler's here again. Oh. <sighs> If you keep rewarding that behavior, then you end up with somebody who's at your door all the time, right? You've probably been in that situation. You might have even had that situation with relatives. So, by planning ahead, by having several different things that you can do, by not just saying, I'm going to train my bird, I'm going to train them to step up today. You get them in a situation where they don't, they're not interested in stepping up. What are other things you could train them to do? Have that lined up. You could teach them targeting. Maybe they're more interested in that. Maybe they're not hungry right then. So you can teach them how to play with a new toy. Have alternates, right? If you always have an alternate, you're not just going to the battlefield with one bullet or heading out to, you know, to the battlefield with one bandage, okay? It makes a lot of difference. Um, I remember when I had to leave one time, and I've talked about this before, but it, it's pertinent here. I had to leave, okay? I had to get out because I had to be somewhere. This was back when I used to do computer jobs. And she would not, she would not sit still in her cage. I put her in there and she comes flying out. I didn't realize there was a hawk outside that was scaring her, okay? It took me six months to get her to trust me again. She's always been a little flighty, haven't you, Lorelei? So... I didn't have an alternate for that behavior. I didn't have something I could do in a situation where she's out and I need to go. Well, I come up with I came up with one later, which is first of all, I'd leave 10 minutes earlier. So I'm not in a hurry. So that could never happen again. And then cuz you can't catch her. She's flying around that main bird room. You can't catch her. This is one flying she flies like a bat. She's so good at it. Don't you, Lorelei? Peach? Did you say peach? You said peach? You said peach? You did? Yeah, I'm preening her at, at the tail end. You don't want to do this. You only want to do that with a bird who has six fused vertebrae and she can't preen herself. So you have to go to the vet again and possibly lose her because of an infected follicle. Right, Peach? That's a beautiful girl. Can you sing? Can you sing for us? Peaches, can you sing for us? Oh, come on, sing. Peaches. Hello, Peach. Hello, Peach. No singing? Zippo, what are you doing down there? You making a nest? Uh-oh. What are you doing nesting down there? You're not supposed to be nesting. Snowball, Lorelei, uh-uh. Snowball, Lorelei, uh-uh. Nice hop, Lorelei. So, for example, in this situation, it's separate them. 
Move one or the other. Hold one. Say, you know, use the word N-O to indicate not to do something. Um, worst case scenario, put one of them in a timeout cage. Distract them with something. Um, I don't have them out right now, but I have these little balls I can throw at them. I chose not to bring those out today. I didn't want that option. Right, Lorelai? Right? Right? Well, that does it for the free version of our video. So keep these ideas in mind, and we're going to go on and talk to our patrons now about some of the circumstances where I've used these tools and talk specifically. So thanks for watching. Please consider supporting us. You go out to our website, www. I don't know why we say that anymore. ChloeSanctuary.org. It is a secure site. Hit the donate button or support now. Where are you going, Snowball? Why are you getting on the floor? And schedule a monthly donation. And of course, you can stop that at any time, but schedule a monthly donation. And of at least $2 a month. And uh, you can be part of our organization, see the longer videos, the higher quality videos. And you can also join our workplace if you'd like because you'll be on our board of advisors, right? Snowball, come here. Come on, Snowball. You can sit. You need to sit over here while I get the Snowball. Come on, Snowball. Come on. Snowball. Say goodnight. Say goodbye to the people. Say goodbye to the people, Snowball. Bye. See you next time. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. To science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower.